Now, spherical coordinates are really great for certain shapes, but it takes a bit of practice to know when to use them, how to use them. Certain shapes are just perfect. For example, if you've got a hemisphere, let's say rho is going from zero to some constant r, then you would have theta sweeping around from zero to two pi. And to get that upper hemisphere, you would have phi going from zero, north pole, to pi over two, the equator. That's a good one. Let's say you want to make a cone, an infinite cone. That would be given by rho going from zero to infinity, theta going from zero to two pi, and phi going from zero to some small number, something, let's say, less than pi over two. And finally, for a wedge-like shape, you would have rho going from zero to some capital R, and then theta in between, let's say, two numbers, a and b, and phi sweeping all the way from zero to pi. And these kinds of shapes that have numerical limits, oh, they're so nice when you're trying to integrate using spherical coordinates. Now, in general, looking at slices of constant uh, phi, theta, rho values, that's going to help you with visualizing what is happening in spherical coordinates. I encourage you to do that. So for example, if we look at the set of all points that have a fixed rho value, then what is that going to be? That's going to be a sphere of radius rho about the origin. And then if we look at the set of all points of a fixed theta, then just as with cylindrical coordinates, that's going to be a half plane abutting the z axis. And for points of fixed phi, that is going to be a cone with cone point at the origin. Now, in general, visualizing spherical coordinates is a little more challenging than visualizing cylindrical coordinates. You might want to take a moment, contemplate, practice, think about different examples. What happens when I fix different values of rho and theta and phi? And you'll find that in no time you're getting the idea, the geometry of spherical coordinates.